Okay, the goal in this final lesson is to demonstrate how to integrate Cortana into our application. And I created a small example called Cortana Example. And uh, it's, it's meant to illustrate in the most simplest way possible how to integrate Cortana into your application. I don't think you'll find a simpler example uh, out there. So watch what it can do. Hey, Cortana. In example app, add a red rectangle. All right, adding a rectangle. Hey, Cortana. In example app, add a blue circle. Sure, adding a circle. Hey, Cortana. In example app, add a rectangle. Sure, adding a rectangle. Okay, so hopefully you'll see that there were three scenarios here. In the first scenario, I gave both the color and the shape. In the second example, I gave a color and a different shape. And then the third example, I gave only the shape and let Cortana decide what the color should be. Uh, except Cortana is not quite that smart. You have to give it a little bit more information than that, and I'll demonstrate that in this video. All right, so let me show you how I created this application. It all starts with something called a voice command dictionary. This allows you to create a series of voice commands that Cortana will respond to for your application. And so in this case, you can see that I've created uh, this XML file. It follows a very specific schema as laid out here in the XML namespace. We'll talk about where to find that in just a moment. You create a set of commands called a command set for every uh, language and region that your application will support. So in our case, this is the English US version. And it's also important to note that Cortana is not available in every region and every language just yet. So the next thing that I do is create a command prefix. And this is why I said, hey, hmm, in example app, whatever. Okay. So this is means that she's listening for this specific command prefix so that she can identify your application uh, and send the command to your application as opposed to other applications that might be running at that time. You see here that I have two commands. One is add rectangle and the other is add circle. These names are important because I'm going to utilize them from within our, our code in just a moment. Here I have a series of listen for elements and this will allow me to give variations on a command that she can still respond to and it still all trigger the add rectangle command. So in this first case, she's listening for add a rectangle. In the second case, she's listening for add a color rectangle. Now, the little brackets around a uh, in this case are, are important because those are optional words. So you could say add rectangle or add a rectangle. Furthermore, if you were to use the color, you would have to say add a color rectangle because I didn't use the uh, square brackets around the word a. Uh. Now, as far as the color is concerned, you can see that it's using uh, curly braces. And if you look below, there's a phrase list that goes along with that label, color. Here, we can listen to colors red, blue, yellow, and green. All right. So any of those colors will be uh, recognized by Cortana in this command. Then finally, you can see that there is a feedback command, and this is what she actually says back to the user. She says, okay, adding a rectangle, or okay, adding a circle. Now these are identical except for the fact that I'm using a circle versus a rectangle, and they trigger different commands. Notice that there are other commands that I'm not really using, like this navigate command. That might be useful if I want to navigate to a different page in an application. 
not really going to demonstrate that in this. Uh, this also is an example, I think more just for reference than anything else, uh, so that you can remember what this is used for. There are also additional, uh, additional elements that can be used inside of a command set. If you want to learn more about command sets, here's what you need to do. Hop open your web browser. Go to dev.windows.com slash Cortana. Then scroll down and go to Cortana Interactions under the Get Started area. And then if you take a look at any of the articles that are inside of this Cortana integration section, uh, you'll find example XML files. So for example, uh, in this first article, Launch a Foreground App with Voice Commands in Cortana, uh, it talks about the VCD, or rather the Voice Command Dictionary, and it gives you some example XML. In fact, I just copied this XML and pasted it into my own uh, file that I called Cortana Example Commands.xml. So you want to reference that page again, dev.windows.com slash Cortana, and then navigate to to Cortana integrations and look at any of the articles there. It'll also give you um, additional commands that you can use for different scenarios. Okay, so after Cortana recognizes the command prefix and the command itself by using one of these listen for items to identify a specific command, then what we wanna do is actually uh, receive input for the application. Now, what I had to do was override a, uh, a, a method called onActivated. And specifically, I want to know how this application was activated. Was it activated as a result of a voice command? If it wasn't, then I want to return. But if it was, then I'm going to grab out the command arguments that were passed in as I activated event args and so we're casting them essentially to a specific type of event arg called the voice command activated event args and then once we have the command args for voice we can uh, grab off the result property into a variable called speech recognition result. And here I can determine which command was spoken and which in the entire text, if I want to parse through it myself. Additionally, I can use that speech recognition result to get at which color in the phrase list was, was, uh, was selected, was spoken. And notice here that I'm just indexing in in both cases to the first item. Uh, that's to, uh, I guess in, it's possible that there are multiple commands and multiple phrase lists that were, were passed in. So we're just grabbing the first one. And then the rest is really just logic in my application. In this case, I'm going to uh, compare the spoken color that we grabbed off uh, from the semantic interpretation of properties indexing into the color uh, label and then I just make sure that we return a windows.ui.color and now what I want to do is get a reference to the main page and I'm going to determine by the voice command was it add rectangle or add circle and either way I'm going to call a method on the page that I just got a reference to here and I pass in the color that was selected so uh, back in the main page.xaml, uh, I just made a uh, two public methods. Here's a public void create rectangle, and here's a public void create circle. They're pretty much identical, passing in the color and just creating a random left and top, and then um, creating a new instance of that particular object, in this case an ellipse giving it a width and a height and a margin, and then I use the fill. Uh, I use the uh, the color to create a solid color brush that I apply to the fill property, and then I just make it a child uh, by adding it to the layout grid that I have. 
So pretty simple, right? All right, so let's use the what we learned in this example to add Cortana integration into our application. So what I'm going to do is actually kind of put this over to the side here, and then I'm going to open up our application. And the first thing that I want to do to my application is add a new item. I'm going to add a voice command dictionary. So I'm going to scroll down until I find the XML file. And I'll call this voice command dictionary. Oh, there is one last thing I need to show you as well from that previous project. Let me drag it back into view here. One thing I didn't show you was we need to load up that voice command dictionary, and I do that here in the page loaded event. So I'm going to go out and say, hey, I want to grab this Cortana example commands.xml file, and I want to load it into my command definition manager by calling the install command definition from storage file async method, passing in the storage file that I created a reference to here. So hopefully that, that makes sense. So now what I want to do is actually open up that previous voice command dictionary, and I'm going to paste it in to my new voice command dictionary.xml. And of course, I'm going to change everything up. I'm going to call this command prefix um, hero explorer, and the example will be refresh the character list. And so I'm only going to have one command, and it's not going to have a phrase list associated with it. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of all of that. This is going to be a very simple implementation. I'm going to call this command refresh, and the example will be something like refresh the character list. And we'll give a couple of, of um, variations on this. So refresh the character list, or even just refresh uh, the characters. And I might even just make this character also optional. I don't know if I can do that. Let's just throw that in there. So you could just say refresh list or refresh characters or refresh the list, refresh the character list, refresh the characters. Okay, so a lot of different ways to get at this. Then the feedback uh, we want is refreshing character list. All right, so that part's done. The next thing that I want to do is go to the app.xaml file. Let's open it up here, and I'm going to override a method that you cannot see, uh, and I'm actually just going to copy and paste it from this Cortana example, and then we'll just strip off the things we don't need from it. All right. So I definitely won't need colors, so we can go ahead and just, it doesn't like that anyway because I don't have the proper namespaces added. That's fine. Get rid of that. And there are other things we need, like spoken color. We don't need to grab off anything like that. We just remove all of that. I don't need the, the text that was actually spoken. All I really need to do is make sure that the voice command is indeed the command that we're looking for. So uh, I can actually get rid of most of this as well. Um, and I just want to make sure that the voice command name equals refresh. That that's what she passed in. And if it is, then uh, we'll call into our public method on our main page. We'll create that in just a little bit. But I'll go ahead and get rid of all of here, all of this rather, uh, like so. And this greatly simplifies the application. Like everything else needs to be there, but we've eliminated all the fluff that we don't need. Okay, great. Now in the main page.xaml.cs, what I want to do uh, in the page loaded event is to actually load up that um, uh, that voice command dictionary file. So I think I'll actually do that first before we go off into um, populating the Marvel characters. I'm just going to go ahead and paste in 
this code right here. And we'll change the name of the file because I named this one voice command dictionary dot XML. Otherwise everything can stay the same. But I do need to create something that uh, we can call from from the app.xaml.cs from that on activated event. So here's where I need to make some decisions. I think I could really just take uh, virtually everything inside of this. In fact, let me just go ahead and grab everything out here. I'm going to take all this and I'll put it in a method called refresh. So let me do that. Go to public uh, async void refresh. And its only job will be to do all of that. And then we'll call refresh here. And this also sets us up to create some user interface element that you can click on to refresh, but we're not going to do that in this video or in this series of videos for that matter. Okay, uh, so that looks good. Let's make sure it all compiles here. All right, hopefully I didn't forget a step. I think we're in good shape. Let's make sure, oh, I need to go back here to the app.xaml.cs, that's right. And here I need to go uh, page.refresh. Yeah, yeah, okay, let me just get rid of that. And that as well. All right, in fact, well, for that matter, I'll get rid of that and that too. Okay, great. So uh, let me go ahead and give it a whirl and see what happens here. Let me. Uh, Go back to our local machine. Run the application. Okay, so it looks like we start with new warriors and go on from there. So here we go. Hey Cortana. In Hero Explorer, refresh the characters. Refreshing the character list. All right, so that didn't work. Let's put a breakpoint here and see if we ever get to this unactivated event. Uh, we'll start right there and let's run it again. Oh, I see what the problem is. We were already at 10 characters. <laughs> All right, so a little bug in the logic. Not too, uh, that's not a problem. So let's go marble characters dot clear. And that should fix the problem. Now let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And it should work this time. Hey Cortana. In Hero Explorer, refresh the character list. Sure thing. Refreshing the character list. All right, so we started out with Death Bird. Everything went away. Now we'll start adding new ones. All right, and you can see it's working. All right, great. So Cortana integration was easy, especially once you figure out all your logic issues. <laughs> but uh, um, you obviously can expand this. I only showed you a simple scenario. The application was already running. There's also another scenario where you can create a background task that's constantly listening, even when your application's not running, and it can launch your application and then give it the Cortana uh, command that the user spoke to Cortana, okay? Again, an advanced example. You can find that in the uh, Universal Window Apps uh, examples on GitHub, which I'm gonna give you the link to in the very next video. In fact, that's a good segue to the next video because we're gonna wrap up the series. I'm gonna give you some places to look for other great, uh, great resources, and that's one of them. Uh, but see how easy it was to integrate Cortana? So uh, you're gonna find that People will want this level of integration. This is one of the coolest new features to come out of Microsoft in a while. All right, so let's wrap it up in the next video. We'll see you there. Thanks.